Welcome to Crafting with Kimberly. I'm Kimberly Kennelly, and today we're going to make this really cute starfish wreath. Let's start. For this project, we are going to need a metal starfish wreath, a wooden fish, some seashells, some sea glass, nautical rope, this is actually um, 11 feet long. This was all of these projects, all of these pies were from the Dollar Tree. So you can see nautical rope. Uh, the 11 feet is just absolutely perfect. You'll have a little length about this long left over. Um, you can use any kind of rope that you want, but this actually is a perfect length for that. And some raffia, a trick for raffia by Hula Skirts. While they're here in the summer and they're in plentiful supply, get a whole bunch of these hula scrubs because you get a ton of raffia out of it. Uh, little packages of raffia are very expensive. So with this one, you get just a ton of raffia that you can use for multiple projects. Super strong, super sturdy, can be used for so many things. So I love, I stock up on hula scrubs like crazy. So it's a great way to do it. They're tied, you can kind of see that they're tied at the top. You just untie it and you can pull your raffia off as you need it. So this is a great little trick and tool to be able to use. Now, if I'm going to be talking for this project if you were able to get a kit for the library because this is the video for the library. Um, but if not, I've shown you everything that you can use. Uh, again, I got all of my supplies from the Dollar Tree. So in your kit, you will have had all of these things. Um, one thing that I've noticed with the Dollar Tree wreaths is they are not all that sturdy. When you're paying $1.25 for them, great deal. But still, sometimes they have a problem with shipping. So you can see right here, this one is broken there. And it's also broken here up at the top. This is coming away. But that doesn't mean you still can't use it. So what I want to show you in case your seams come away, a great trick is just, we're covering it with rope. I think we'd still be okay, but I just want to really make sure that it is staying attached and staying on. And because we're covering this, it doesn't really matter what I'm going to use. I'm going to use duct tape because duct tape is a great sturdy tape. So I'm just going to put a little piece of duct tape here, put my wreath together, make sure that it's lining up together. I'm just going to fold this over and then I am going to wrap this around. So I'm just repairing what was broken. So if you find them, you know, especially the specialty wreaths, they don't always get a lot and they're not always in stock. So if you find a couple that are broken, go ahead and repair it like that and it will be fine. We're not putting anything heavy on this wreath. So if, if I was going to, I would reinforce that quite a bit but you can see that will do the trick that's going to hold it on there. I'm gonna do the same thing for the little piece that I have up at the top. Again, you don't need a lot, but if some of you that were able to receive a kit or um, for those that are going to go shopping and you do find the wreaths that are broken, don't pass it by. You can also put a little bit of glue on this end too to hold that on there. I'm just gonna put a little bit of duct tape because again, I'm covering this entire part. So I'm just gonna smooch that on there. I'm gonna cut a little bit on each side there like that, just so I can get it because I'm covering a round surface. So I'm just gonna bring that up and around and bring it there just really reinforcing it just a tiny bit, making sure it stays together. And I am pushing it very close. You can see it for this edge here because our, our rope is going to be just around the outside edge. 
So I don't want a thick, huge piece of, of paper here, of, of tape. So I'm going to just kind of snip in the little sides here. Push those around. So this will hold. You can see how I've pushed that together. It's going to hold sturdy now, and I'm going to be able to cover that right up with my rope. You also want to decide where you want your wreath to hang. Do you want two open ends like this, or do you want it to hang from the top? With the wreaths that were included with the kit, I kept the plastic loop on there. You can use that to hang your wreath from. I am going to use part of the raffia that we came in the tip, and I'm going to make a hanger from that. So I personally am going to snap that off and not use the raffia. So ready for your wreath. Pick the part you want to be up at the top. I'm not going to go by these two sides that were broken, so I'm going to I'm going to just choose that top. I'm going to start up at the top. I am going to take my rope. I'm going to be working with this all in one piece. You can cut it in sections if you'd like, but it is really easy to just work in one piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to start, we're going to cover the entire, just the outside edge. Eventually, everything, every little line here that you see is going to be covered. That will all be covered with rope. But to start, I am going to follow along the entire line with one continuous rope. So you pick the part where you're going to start. This rope has plastic, like a little piece of tape on the end of it. We're gonna cut that off. That's just so the rope won't unfray as you're working with it. So I am going to cut this off peel that off because I don't need that. It would be covered anyway, so you could keep it, but I'm going to I'm going to get rid of it just to have that off. And you can see it wants to un unfray. So you just twist it around a little bit. Start up at your top and put a good glob of glue up there to start. I'm going to twist again just to make sure that's really nice and tight and I'm going to set it down. I'm gonna hold it there just a little bit. Move it around just to make sure that it really catches for me. So as I'm pulling, it's not gonna completely come off. You can also take your tip of your glue gun, smooth those edges down. If it really wants to start to um, unravel, you can just wipe a little bit of glue on that. Always use a protected surface as well. I have a nice silicon mat that I use. Um, these are great because you can drip right onto it and then the glue peels right off. I love these. Um, if you don't have that, you can use a plastic table uh, placemat. You can use, I always cover my work surface with a plastic tablecloth. You can use that. But I found the, the mat works the best, and then the second best would be a plastic um, place mat because it's a little sturdier than this. This it will glue to when you pull it off, you'll have a hole. So it's just a little easier to have something sturdy. If you don't have any of those, also what works great is wax paper. So now that that's on there and that's secure, I am just going to take my glue gun and I am just going to follow along the outside of this line for a little while and I am just going to lay my rope right in the middle right on top I'm just covering the edge you're going to get a lot of glue that's going to be dripping down from the sides because you're you're using a very thin piece of wire and usually a big glob of glue and gravity takes over, starts to pull on down. So you are gonna, the back is gonna be messy, but we can fix that all up. So you can see how I am just following along the outline. 
So we're just going to go through the entire top of this. I'm going to go all the way down to the edge, kind of whenever you get to the edges, just going to push, make sure that it's there. Put a big, good glob of glue at that edge. When you get to the end, you're going to keep turning this around. It's going to be much easier to turn it as you go. You're also going to want to pinch it. You want a nice, good, solid part there. So now I'm going to glue. Do little bits, too, as you go along. Do little spurts of glue. You don't want to glue the whole thing because the glue dries quickly. And you don't want to have to rush. You want to be able to really make sure... See how I've pinched that corner there to make a nice solid end? You want to make sure that you're getting all your area covered. And you can see how fast that goes. See how that already dried. So now I'm to the part here. I'm going to go back a little bit because this came undone. I'm going to go, this happens to be where my duct tape is. I'm just going to glue right over that. And again, the trick is really little pieces at a time just to make sure i'm kind of doing this up as a at a sideways i'm not right on top of it um you know lift it up if you have to push it down just make sure you're getting the wire covered you don't want the wire to show again when you get to the ends you want to give a good glob of glue and then pinch it together to have a nice finished edge. Pinch that together and then continue moving around. And again, move it and lift it as you go. It makes it much easier. To go um, and take your time, really take your time with it. This is a very fast craft so take those few extra minutes just to make sure your glue is really going where it needs to go the rope is going where it needs to go and you're getting a good solid connection between the wire and the glue again big daub at the end bringing it down pinching it making sure it's connected and again turning as you go this technique can be used for any of the wire wreath forms um the sky's the limit especially at holiday time they have a lot of really cute holiday shapes so any type of rope will work because it's summertime and it's hot we're doing an ocean theme so this nautical rope works great but you could use twine you can use yarn you can really use whatever you want i'm just pushing this is where i had my seam where the uh tape was so i just really want to make sure that i have that covered that's why i was taking a little bit of extra time there you can see I have found with the cheaper glue sticks, you get an awful lot of strings. More expensive glue sticks that you can buy at the big box stores don't always have a lot, so I kind of like to clean up the glue strings as I go, just so there's not such a mess. But again, any kind of uh, twine, clothesline, yarn, Any of that looks great covering these wreaths, these wire wreaths. Again, pinch. I'm at the bottom here, so I'm going to pinch. I'm almost finished here. You can see we're almost to the end. And as I said, this is a really fun, fast project. This doesn't take long to make at all. You can bump up lot of these out. I'm going to continue that around, pushing it down, and I'm coming right to my edge. 
I'm going to come down to the right where I started and bring it down. So now you can see in one continuous piece, lots of strings, <laughs> one continuous piece, you can see the entire thing is covered. And again, these will all, once they're really dry, these are all going to come away afterwards. I'm just trying to clean up as I go along here. Um, so as I pick it up, it's not having a ton of strings for you to look at. If for some reason, after you get through this, you have little spots that didn't quite catch, just go over it with a glue gun, glue gun again, that'll work. So you can see by, by my lifting it up right there, it wasn't exactly dry yet. Because it does, you know, glue guns do take a little bit to dry. So again, you just go right over it. Now, because this is up at the top, we're going to be making a raffia bow to put up at the top. So I am going to cut this now right at the tip. That's going to be covered. And I'm going to add just a little bit of glue. And again, with my glue gun, the tips are great to really use. You can really kind of push out a little bit of glue. I'm pushing out just a little bit of glue and I'm just kind of following along the lines there, just smoothing it down and making sure that it's glued together. So you can see that gives a nice, a nice little edge. And again, we're covering the very tip of this, so you're really not going to see that. So now I still have a lot of string rope to go through. So now we're going to start to do the center pieces. Right now, I am going to worry about these other long pieces. I'm not going to worry about these tiny little short sides, and I'm really not going to worry about the middle. For this project, I am going to be putting seashells and sea glass in the middle so mine won't show. If you want to design yours differently and you do want that to show, you may want to take your rope and then do a circle around the center as you as you glue it in. If you're going to have your center be open, that would look very nice as well. And then just glue right up onto that part. But I'm going to cover mine, so I am not going to worry about how we're going along. So starting at the same top. I'm going to just again twist to make sure that that's a nice pointy part here. I'm going to start down here, glue a little bit on my on my rope that's already there. I'm going to go all the way just to that edge for right now. I'm going to poke this down in. Continue that, make it be right in the middle. And again, I'm going to cover that so I'm not too worried about that. Now, I don't want to have to cut it a ton of times. So I am just going to then skip this little line here in the middle. I'm going to go around this centerpiece and then go back up to my next point. So kind of make it a U. You can glue this on any way that you would like. You can cut each piece separately if you want. I'm trying to do the least amount of cutting if I can, just because it's easier. So you can see I'm just going right down to the other tip. I'm just gonna eyeball it here. This is where I need to cut it. Cutting it enough. So I can just poke that right down in. And then that's glued in the corners. Um, if you were able to get a kit, I have given you three seashells and three pieces of sea glass. If you want to create this and make this your own, another beautiful idea is taking a seashell or sea glass and putting them at each of the tips of the corners. 
put the raffia bows, whatever you want to do. But I'm not doing that, so that's why I want to just make sure that my rope is looking nice in that corner. Because I'm not going to cover the corner. So now you see we have a U, just like that. So now I'm going to go to my next side and I'm going to do another U. Again, picking the tip, going into the tip, following along with the glue. Poking my tip in there. following along my line, making sure it's even. And now I'm going to continue to make my U going up the other way. So put some glue a little bit around the side, the circle, and continuing to glue all the way to the other tip. Following it down. Bringing it down, feeling where I have to cut. I'm right here at the edge, so I know I've got to cut that. So that's going to poke down into my edge, making sure it's glued down. So you can see my other tip. So now we have two U's. So now I have this one line that I have to do. And I think what I'm going to do is just again, so I don't have to cut so much, I'm going to follow up this way, go around a little bit, and then go down to this line. So starting in the middle here, my tip, following the glue line up, I'm just going to wait. Putting that in the center, pushing it down, bringing it up, and now I'm going to go just around this little bit and then follow that straight line down. So that will be my first little center line that I'm going down. And then cutting. Again, I am covering the center, so you are not going to see it. So I'm not worried about that. If you don't want to put anything in the center, you could always still do this method and then still do a circle up at the top at the end if you would like to, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just push that around. So now I have another little piece here. For this one, these little pieces are a little fiddly. I had a piece of tape there, so I took that off. These pieces are a little fiddly, so I am just going to cut that and then decide where I need that to go and cut that piece. And then just glue my straight piece across. And not worrying too much about what the center looks like. That will all be covered, so I want to make sure there's a nice straight cut where I'm attaching it. So you can see the little piece. So I'm going to continue that. Figure out how long I have to go. Cut. Glue. This is the hardest part of it. And look at how fast this project goes. And it really looks cute on the door. All right, so I've got that piece. Now I have this center one. Cut that. And again, I'm not measuring. I'm just laying it on there. And you can embellish as much as you want to embellish. So if you've just taken a trip for the summer 
You've got some seashells, some sea glass, some uh, beach rocks. Those would be great to add to this. And I have one more piece. Cutting that. Gluing there. Making sure everything's there. Lots and lots of glue <laughs> strips on these. I have no idea where I got these glue sticks from. But they are definitely stringy and sticky. <laughs> so there, that is what that looks like. So this shows you a really nice covered wreath. So that was the hardest part. That was the longest part of this whole project. You can go through Pull some of your strings if you have strings. Look at it. Make sure all your wires are covered. If they're not covered, go back, add a little bit of glue where you need it to be. Just making sure that it looks good from that angle. So now is the fun part, the decoration. As I said, you have about this much string left, rope left over. If you wanted to, you could do a circle and add that to the center. If you didn't want to cover up your center, that looks really good. I'm going to cover mine completely. So remember where you started this, what you decided was going to be your top. This is my top. This is all these edges are very nice and neat. Our beginning edge was not that neat, so that's what I want to be my top. So when I cover that with my, my raffia bow, you're not going to see it. So let's do that raffia bow next, because then we don't have to worry about turning this over when we're going to be gluing our things. If you were, were able to receive a kit, you received six strands of the hula skirt raffia. So what I want you to do is I want you to take three. So take three of your strands, put your edges together. Doesn't have to be precise, but put your edges together, follow along, come to the other side, and knead them up. We're just basically folding this in half bring them together again. If they don't match up completely, that's okay. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do the tie for the wreath. So we're going to take three of those strands, fold it in half. This is going to be really strong. It's going to hold this really, really well. So from there, I'm going to find my middle of my piece that I've just put in half. There's my middle. The easiest way to do this, find your top, find your top strand. You've, you're kind of holding the middle. Hold it there. Push the one end down through. You're coming up from the front and going to the back. All the strands. Careful not to get them caught like I just did. So just through there, go down now through the other side, pushing it down, and pulling it through, and then pull it up as far as you can. So you can see, I have just pushed it through the top. It's coming from the back coming from these sides, you can see. We're just gonna pull that up to the top. I'm bringing it up. Because obviously you can't go all the way up to the top because we glued that other line there and there's a lot of glue, but you just wanna bring it up as, as far up as you can go. So then with those strands that you've got on there, keeping one side, one side, bringing it up. What I'm gonna do is I wanna 
depending on how big, how long you want to hang this, I have a door hanger, so mine hangs pretty low. So I'm going to tie, tie a knot probably midway down. But, you know, measure on your door if you want to, so you don't have to tie that. That's going to be solid. That's not going to go anywhere right now. So if you want to wait to measure to see how far you want it to hang down, you can do that. So all I'm doing is tying a knot. So now you've got a great hanger. I like bushy, fluffy raffia. So I'm just going to cut my edges because remember we had a bow on one side. Or a loop so I'm just gonna cut those when I hang this I'm just gonna bring this to the back so I can have it hanging um, to the side like that if you don't like it you want it neater then just cut it or tie it in a bow whatever you would like for that and then speaking of bows as long as we're doing raffia let's go to your other three strands again the same thing join the three pieces together I just smooth it out a little bit. Come to your edge. Meet those. So you're basically folding those in half. So you've got three strands folded in half. You'll have a loopy end and you'll have an open end. Now we're just going to tie a bow. You can tie a knot like you're going to tie your shoelaces. You can tie a knot and then just make a regular bow. I'm not going to do that. I don't need to tie a knot. So I'm going to kind of come part way down. Actually, I want to make this even smaller. Let's, let's divide that in half. I don't want so much hanging. So we've brought it in half. Let's bring it in half again. So we've taken it in half, taken it in half. So now we have loopy ends on one side, edges, and another little bit of loopy ends on that side. Now we're just going to make a bow. So what I'm going to do without tying a knot in the middle, I'm just gonna come oh, probably part way down because remember whatever end you use to loop it around and go up through, you're using more on one end. So you really, whenever you're making a bow, you always wanna have more on one side than the other. You wanna kind of guess how much you want hanging down. So I'm gonna start it there. I'm gonna just make a loop. bring it around and push it through making a bow like I said if it's easier for you to make a bow and you just want to tie a knot in the middle first and then make a bow go for it there's no hard fast rule of how to make a bow but with this one you can see you just want to bring all your pieces together making sure they all come up through. So now I have loops on one side. I have pieces that hang down on the other. I'm just gonna pull, flip them out a bit. So now you can see there's a nice little bow. I'm going to take my scissors and just snip the loops of the tails that I want hanging down not the loops of your bow, just snip the, snip the strands that are hanging down. And just move around, I like to keep these kind of big to make my loops, spread those out. And I'm going to glue that right to the tip of the top, right there so then we can hide where we first started. So good, put a good amount of glue right up at the top. You could put a seashell there. You could really do whatever you want. Just decide which side of the bow you like better. Uh, I'm gonna go with this side. I'm just gonna push that right there up at the top. Spread it out, fluff it up. So there, you can see like it's almost all one continuous piece even though it wasn't. So that's your top. If you wanna put a little seashell there or a button, um, anything, anything, um, sea glass, you can do whatever you want there. So now we're gonna decorate. 
I love these little fish that they have at the Dollar Tree. These are so cute. They're little wooden fish. They're a little flexible. They're really cute. Um, you, if you were able to get a kit, you have just a wooden fish. It is not decorated. You can decorate this any way you want. You can leave it just the wood plane, which I think looks really cute. It almost looks like driftwood then. You can do that. You can paint it. You can decoupage it. You can get really fancy because of the stripes. Each of those are a little separate. You can paint each one of those separate. You could put pieces of uh, wrapping paper, contact paper, anything that you want. Go to town with decorating it. I happen to paint mine. I, I did choose to do the different stripes. I used um, two of the Deco Art metallics. I like the metallic look. Uh, one was teal and one is called crystal green. So they have a nice metallic sheen. And then I used um, Craft Mart metallic paint just in the gold. So to me, that was beachy. I liked, I liked the way that looked, kind of give a nice beachy vibe to it. So I painted mine. If you're going to paint yours, wait to, wait to glue it on. Obviously, it's much easier to paint it before it gets on there. So decide what you want to do with that before you attach your fish. For mine, because as I said, I am not going to do the center. Each of the kits had three seashells and three pieces of sea glass. The sea glass varies, so you never know what size, what colors you get. The shells that they sell at Dollar Tree, they have a tendency, many of them to be broken because it's a, it's a delicate thing. They just kind of throw them in the shelves. People pick them up, move them around. They're pretty delicate. But if you have shells that are broken, then just think about where you're laying them. So like if you have a whole section that's broken, well then lay your other shell over it if you don't like the way it looks, or add your, your sea glass to it. I'm going to do mine, or I'm going to be covering up this whole center area. I'm going to glue those on like that, so I will cover that whole area, and I am choosing to put I'm gonna glue my sea glass in the center around there. So I'm really gonna cover up that entire center. But you can see it looks, I can't hold it up completely, but you can see it would also look nice with seashells at the corners of it. You could do three, two, get another seashell, um, go get more packs of seashells. You could put sea glass at the edges of it, you could put clusters of sea glass, whatever you want to do. So it's your idea um, to decorate it however you want. So as I said, I am going to put my seashells in the middle. So you decide how you want. I have a little piece of rope here that's sticking up. So I'm just going to glue that down. Smooth it down. Like I said, really... A, good trick is using the glue gun as a smoother. You can use chopsticks too, but why not just use the tool that you're using? So decide how you want it to look, where you want it to go. I think I'm going to fan, yeah, I think I like that. I'm going to fan them out this way for these particular shells. And all I'm doing for that is I'm just going to put some glue around the outside of my shell here along the bottom. And I'm going to just set that down. Just push it down gently. And it will catch onto the ropes. You could glue the ropes directly as well. I'm not really worrying about where it goes. So I'm just, I know it's making contact with the rope. And then I'm going to put this one in the middle. As I go along, so there you can see how I've laid my seashells. And as I held that up, I saw another piece of rope over here that wasn't completely glued down. So I'm just going to smooth that part down. 
I said to get, when you're doing it quickly like this, sometimes you just need to fiddle a little bit. So now I have my sea glass. I'm going to decide how I want to lay them, where I want to put them. I think I'm going to put this, I have a big white piece, so I'm going to put that right in the middle. Lay that down. With sea glass, if you do not want it frosted, if you want it to be more shiny, you can paint it with either Mod Podge or clear nail polish. I like the frosted look because that's, that's the idea of sea glass. And the shapes are kind of funny, so you want to hold it up and decide, well, how do I want that? Where do I want that? I think I'm going to put it a little bit on the edge here. Decorative like that. It's, it's however you want to do it. You hold it for just a few seconds. So there you go. You could use, you know, this is a quick and easy project, not something that you're going to keep for 20 years. If this is something that you want to keep a little longer, what you might want to use is E6000 to keep the glue and the, the to use as glue for the seashells and the sea glass. That would keep it on a little stronger. But for my purposes, I just, I'm happy with my glue gun. I'm going to take my fish. I'm going to decide where I want him. I want him hanging right there. So now I'm going to, I think for this one, I am going to put the glue right onto the ropes. So I can make sure that that's really coming in contact with my little fish. So I know exactly where that goes. Hold it down for a few seconds. And there you have it. Isn't that cute? That'll be really fun to hang on your door. This is going to be just a, a, just a nice summer fun project for the heat wave that we're in. So I hope you have enjoyed this. Try it out with other shapes and sizes. Um, this is going to be on the library's website. Uh, so check out Southeast Duban County Library if you want to look back, see this video again. Um, if you're confused on any of the steps, watch it again. So I hope you liked it. Drop a comment and I hope you show me a picture of what you've made. So thanks so much. Until next time, this is Kimberly Canale with Crafting with Kimberly. Bye.